Hi, I'm Steve Mealy. I'm a member of the Board of Selectmen, and I'm here with my fellow member, Peter Meyer. And we're going to talk a bit about the redevelopment of the Buzzards Bay Park and two articles which are coming up in the May 1st town meeting. And um, we thought we'd just talk about the background and um, how we're planning to finish off the park and what, uh, what the articles in the town meeting are going to be asking. So, Peter, why don't we, why don't we start off with, with how we got into where we are today, how the redesign, the redevelopment of the Buzzards Bay Park started. It was a vision that was started by, um, that I started to look at back in 2014. Um, I felt that we needed to do our part to revitalize Buzzards Bay, but this is also nothing new. Uh, Tom Mosier, uh, back in the, the Buzzards Bay Beautification Group, did, you know, had a contact back about 15 plus years ago to revitalize this very park. So um, I brought it up to my fellow board members and we were, we went at, we'd, as a, with a vote of the board, we chose to go ahead with it. Um, it it's, there's a lot of things that need to be done if it was electrical, if it was um, security, drainage, um, ADA compliance issues. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, you had nothing but a blank space out and out, out out in the park as it is now, and that and just having a blank space and doing nothing with it wasn't inviting people to stop and visit our park. Therefore, I thought it was time for us to look at a new vision or reach out to the community for a new vision for the park and see what people thought of it. Okay, okay. You want to talk a little bit about how the design developed for the park? Um, yeah. How how how? Yes, because how did the design of Buzz Bay Park develop? because that was one of the tasks that we asked the public or uh, a committee to, t to take. Well, as you'll recall, the, the board had asked the uh, Main Street Steering Committee to undertake this, and uh, as uh, the representative to the Main Street Steering Committee, I was involved with uh, putting together uh, with the other members a uh, survey that asked what they'd like to see from their, their park. Uh, this was done back in 2014, and we've, we sent out a survey. We got over 400 responses from residents and so forth. And that's really what started the, the uh, development of what, what the park is now going to, we hope, going to look like when it's finished. Um, the, the park has always been like an entry place or a, a meeting place, especially for walks, whether it be for fundraisers and so forth. But be another, besides being just a nice place to walk to and so forth and having a beautiful view of the, of the uh, canal, what, is, what else can we expect? from our park. It, we're, we're making this investment. Are there other things we can expect from the park? Well, from an a economic development standpoint, if we do our part and, and we revitalize the park, it gives the incentive for property owners in the, in the area to do their part and revitalize or remodel or expand their properties. So this is a win-win for both of us. Could if we invest our money, your money, and, 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 do, and, and, and take our risk, then we're, and we're, gonna, we're asking other people to take risks with their own property. So I think it's a partnership that will only bring up property values in the area, but it'll bring some excitement to the area as well. Excellent, excellent. Um, why, why has the work taken so long and why, why now are we looking at the second phase of redevelopment? Uh, that's a good question. I think a lot of people have complained that the park has been in a state of disrepair for a long period of time. There's been a number of issues that have come before the, uh, the development of the project. Um, and I think just to talk about those, because it's taken a lot longer than I think anyone wanted it to. Um, there is, um, as we got into the development, we, we learned some, some interesting uh, issues that had come before us. The, for instance, the drainage of the park actually was, was done with drainage systems being located on the Corps of Engineers property. That had to be relocated. Um, there was scheduling problems with getting before the Conservation Commission for unforeseen permits that were required. Um, if you might recall, uh, the facilities manager for the town who was acting as a clerk of the works for the project uh, left us about a year ago and left us without any direction of having guidance uh, as we started getting into the real nitty gritty of the work. Additionally, the uh, town's electrician who was working part-time was who was going to be responsible for not only the installation of some of the electrical support to the, to the park, uh, was going to be involved with some of the uh, design of the, of the electrical uh, left as well. Uh, so we've had some, some, some unforeseen issues, and of course we had, we've had issues with weather. Um, weather came early last fall. It stayed a little longer this spring, 
And, uh, but I know that as people have gone by recently, they can see you know, significant increases uh, to the amount of work being done. We're starting to see some of the uh, entrances coming together. We're starting to see some of the paving going together and so forth. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really optimistic that you know, we're going to get back on track. We're going to finish the project as we wanted to and um, uh, you know, really make the town proud with, with what, what we have, we've put in uh, for this design. Um, how much have we already spent on the park, um, you know, already, you know, w you know the, the two articles that have already been approved at previous town meetings? Where is, how is that money being spent? We've got, uh, as, as you mentioned, there's two articles from previous town meetings with a total of about $760,000, which um, are available for doing this phase one of this project. Um, we spent about $70,000 on landscape architects, which actually took the the very uh, crude uh, design that the Main Street Steering Committee had come up with and, and formalized it into a, a design which could be reviewed uh, with both the Main Street Steering Committee, the Board of Selectmen, uh, and members of the public, and then develop that into a project that could be worked on by the engineers. We spent another almost $100,000 with engineers to then take that architectural design and put it into a, a, a design that, that could be feasibly built um, it would identify where lighting was supposed to go, it could identify uh, where plantings were supposed to go, et cetera. The general contractor, Marini, uh, was brought on after a request for a proposal. Um, his total cost for the project uh, for phase one is about $540,000. And that's, uh, that'll be the completion of all the work this spring. Um, and as, as you can see, there's been uh, entrances that have been created. There's uh, walkways going through. There's a memorial grove where all of, or most of the memorials that have been placed in the park over the years are being uh, set and congregated in one area. Um, and then there's been miscellaneous uh, expenditures for fuel and equipment rentals and so forth. We did, as we had in the past with the DPW building, we utilized the ice women DPW folks to help with some of the initial um, removal of topsoil and some of the initial landscaping uh, work that it had done and we spent about $40,000 uh, within town, uh, the equivalent of $40,000 by the town folks to do that. And to compare that if we had had to pay prevailing wages, which is uh, what would be required if we were to hire a contractor to do the same work, that could, that could have easily gone two or three times that amount of money to take that work done. What has the contractor done in this money to finish phase one? There is. Uh, I know that there's been concern or comments made by, by folks that, that there isn't enough money to finish the park, that we, we're now coming back to finish the park. And let's just talk about where we, we, what we just finished talking about on the, on the $760,000 already approved. That will take uh, us right through the, the entire portion of phase one, except for a couple of item, items that I'll mention. But we're going to be constructing all new walkways. Uh, we're going to be constructing, as I mentioned, the two entrances off of both Main Street and at the Corps of Engineers parking area. There's going to be bicycle racks, uh, benches, um, there'll be uh, lighting installed and so forth. Um, we're going to, as I mentioned earlier, the, the Memorial Grove, which will be over by the, uh, uh, the Marine uh, complex uh, to the uh, east end of the park. Uh, is going to be a wandering path which is going to be covered with pavers and all of the small uh, memorials which have been placed throughout the park excepting uh, several, most notably the, the fisherman statue and the gazebo will be located there. Um, the uh, areas for tents which have been used throughout the, uh, the history of the park are going to be reinforced so that we're not um, damaging any of the underground utilities, the new utilities being placed in and so forth. Uh, there'll be construction of the concrete foundation for a large pavilion and the installation of curbing around the uh, parking areas. Um, the entire area of phase one is going to be then hydro seeded. Now there's a request within town meeting for an additional $300,000 to complete phase one. That will encompass uh, an, the installation of a, an irrigation system and also the installation of a pavilion. It's, the pavilion is a large building. It's going to be open to allow for concerts or um, having movies and so forth, which was one of the items that uh, people had asked for. That's about 30 by 60 feet. Um, so 
that additional money is going to be coming up within the special town meeting and a request from CPA funds. Where did the cost estimates come from? How do we know that the work can be, can be completed with, with the money we have and the money that's being asked? Well, the, the, as I had mentioned earlier, we, we had hired not only a, uh, a, a, a landscape architect to help with the initial layout of the park uh, and defining, for instance, that, uh, that first phase. And if we look at a photograph of, of, of the different phases, um, you can see that the phase one is really the park as we know it today. And the, both the landscape architect and the engineers, uh, Weston and Sampson, uh, have provided detailed estimates based on uh, the amount of work that has to be done, materials that have to be purchased, et cetera. So we feel confident that the, the, the cost that we have uh, and they're proposing for town meeting will complete the park as proposed. The cost of the park has been, I think, somewhat controversial, and I wonder if you might want to talk a little bit about our park cost and the, and the cost of development versus other parks. I know that you've, you've talked with uh, several members of the street and the Main Street Steering Committee about this. The um, thing to keep in mind is, is if, you, if, you, if you looked at other parks that were built around the country, they're roughly $24 a square foot. We're doing this for $11 a square foot, so this isn't the Taj Mahal. We, we want it to be aesthetically pleasing and to be beautiful, but also be affordable and be efficient at the same time because this is the taxpayers' money and we want to spend it wisely. Um, we also, um, by partnering with D the DPW and Icewim, as Steve said earlier, and doing some in-kind costs, we're, we're even saving that much more money because if we were to take those, those costs and put it out, out into the uh, forbidden purposes, it could be up to two or three times uh, more as well. So it's, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is a practical park that's being proposed for all to enjoy. This isn't something that is in Mar-a-Lago. Do you, do you anticipate the, uh, or have you talked with, with uh, the superintendent of the DPW, George Sauer, about the, the maintenance of the park? Yes, uh, George Sauer is on the, um, the Main Street Steering Committee and also the Recreation Committee, and he's been very involved in this process to a point where maintenance will be less in some areas because the, uh, the shrubbery and the overgrown bushes, um, uh, bushes will be smaller, so it'll be easier to maintain. Um, you'll, be able to, you'll be mowing grass as opposed to mowing weeds and hitting rocks and pings, and, and, also, and also you'll be having water, so, you'll be, you know, so you'll, it'll, it'll be a safe environment. Um, LED lighting, so, the light, you know, so it'll be less, you know, less cost for the lighting, but it will last longer. Um, so, and, and, and the flood and, and will also be contained, so you, you're, not, you're not trying to clean up a mess afterwards. So, it, this, is, this is a more efficient operation when it's all said and done. And it'll, it'll not only look better, but it'll, be, but it'll be easier to maintain. Very good. Very good. We all watched the groundbreaking last summer, and it seemed that the work stopped. When would the park be done? Uh, good question. We, th we feel that with the additional funds being approved at uh, both the special and the annual town meeting uh, next week, that the entire project can, can be completed by this, the end of this calendar year. Um, I think that the, the most difficult thing we're going to have to deal with is that it's going to take uh, six or eight weeks for the grass to germinate and come in to allow people to use the park. So the sooner we can get started with getting the, uh, the final lawn and the hydro seeding, the irrigation and so forth done, then the sooner we can start to use the park. But the entire construction project will be finished this calendar year. Well, with that in mind, um, how does the town go forward to finish the park renovations and what is left to do? Well, we've got, as I mentioned earlier, there's going to be uh, two articles within the, the town meeting uh, next Monday night. There is, the first article will be in a special, it's asking for $300,000 of CPA funds, and that's going to be used to finish up the, uh, the installation of an irrigation system for all the plantings. Uh, it'll pay for a large pavilion, which is approximately 30 by 60 feet and um, uh, to complete all the green space. Um, this does not address the amenities which we've, we've talked about. There's a, a splash pad, playground equipment and so forth, adult uh, recreational equipment. Um, that will be a second uh, article appearing in the annual town meeting. And that request is just over a million dollars, again coming from CPA funds. And that does a number of things. Um, it's gonna be used to uh, install uh, pads for fitness stations. It's going to be used for a, a splash pad, which was a, a major request uh, f during the uh, time we ran 
the survey from, from the residents. Uh, we're going to be installing uh, lighting, um, purchasing other amenities such as benches, parks, and, and uh, uh, trash, trash receptacles and so forth. And be finishing, if we could take another look again at that picture, the phase two of the project. And that really is a piece of the park which has never really been uh, developed and it will be a brand new uh, area that will allow not only the use for uh, the splash pad for the children and a, uh, a playground for kids, it will also be a recreational area that uh, will allow uh, what we foresee as to be an area to doing uh, uh, exercises for adults and so forth. And that area is going to be surrounded by a fenced in area so that if, if a family wants to take the children over to exercise or to play and so forth, they can do that with the confidence that their, their children will be contained within an area and they'll have a watchful ability to be able to watch the children during that time. Um, it'll take care of all of the, the rest of the plantings for that new area, the hydro seating, um, and the, the finalization of all the, the uh, walkways to that new area. So it's, it will finish the park. As, as we see in both phase one and phase two. The other thing to keep in mind is, is the uh, concerts at Buzzers Bay Park on Thursday nights. There isn't much to do other than listen to music. If this is f uh, built out to its fullest extent, you have kids overusing the equipment in phase two while the concerts are going on. So, or there'll be people exercising while the music's going on. I mean, there'll be things for people of all ages to do. So this will complement and this will make it a full service park. I agree. I think it's going to be quite an attraction. Um, but um, the biggest problem we've had around here is people fear that this is an override. They feel that this will be an additional tax burden um, to the average, you know, to the taxpayers of the community and it's not. Um, you're already paying your 3% surcharge on your CPC funds, you know, on the, on the, on the yearly tax mm -hmm. and property bill. Um, so the money's already being allocated. If this is approved, the, you know, you're not going to be paying more than the 3% that you're already paying. And that will pay for the bonding over the course of the note. It could be 15 years, it could be 10 years, it could be sooner. We have not decided that yet. Um, we have other projects that have gone this very route. The athletic fields that are behind the middle school that they use for uh, soccer and lacrosse, and also down the hill um, in the last uh, one or two fiscal years, we've done the, um, the track and uh, the retaining walls and the fencing over at Jackson Field. And as well as other um, properties that have been purchased through open space has been bonded out. This isn't a new idea. And, um, and as, um, but we're already paying 3% you know, on our property tax bill already so we're just using the money that you're already paying to help uh, pay for this project and other projects. That's a good point Peter. I, I think people need to understand that the first article which will be in a special for 300000 will be completely taken out of available CPA funds. The second article that will appear in the annual uh, for a little over $1 million, uh, 555000 of that will be coming out of uh, existing funds and the, the balance will be then borrowed and as you indicated the borrowing will be done for CPA funds, and uh, this, although it's it's not a it's not a new tax, it does not raise or in, impact the uh, budget of the town at all. Uh, it will extend those payments for several years following uh, the, the completion of the park to pay off that loan. Uh, but again, these are existing CPA funds uh, for about 75% of the costs that we have left before us, and I think. If we look at all of the different projects that we've done around the town uh, through the years with using the CPA funds, whether it be for building um, uh, roofs on, on both our own facilities or we did this for a church, we, we rehabbed a building at the uh, train station, we've done a number of things. I can't think of a better application of, of, of using these funds that are available to help you know, improve not only the infrastructure in the town of Bourne, but also what people see when they drive down Main Street for the first time. So I, I think it's an exciting project, and I really hope that people will stand behind it and support it. In review, we have two phases. We have phase one, article two, which is for $300,000 to do the plantings and irrigation system and a pavilion uh, for events and movies and engineering and also helping with some engineering and plans and permitting. and. Um, Phase two, um, which is the $1,015,000, Steve, uh, could you please 
give your version of what's going to happen with sure. Phase Sure, and you know, again, if we could go back to that uh, that picture one more time, Phase Two, which is uh, really the the other half of the the park, if I would, um, we've, we're going to bring in uh, designers uh, to prepare construction documentation and bid packages and so forth to to, to undertake that new work. There'll be a clerk of the works hired, and um, in the past, uh, many of the uh, projects that have been run, especially under the, the CPA funding, have not involved a clerk of the works. Uh, and I know the Board of Selectmen has advocated that be, as the projects get more sophisticated and get more expensive, uh, whether it be the park or, or other projects, a clerk of the works really is going to be an individual that's going to represent the town of Bourne as the project gets under, uh, under you know, started and, under, and the uh, work gets uh, undertaken to make sure that the work is being done according to the specifications and so forth. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a full-time position. We would not suggest that the, uh, the clerk of the works for this particular project would be full-time. Um, there's the, uh, the completion of the electrical uh, and uh, the water systems for the splash pad, drainage for the water for the splash pad, fencing around those areas, as I had talked about. Um, there's materials for some small buildings. We, we plan to have within phase two several buildings placed around the park so if people just want to go and sit and read and get out of the shade, they can. Or if they want to have a picnic and it might start to sprinkle or something, there's, there's some protection. There's going to be some new lawn areas put in in phase two um, and uh, additional plantings and so forth. So I think with, with all the work that we're proposing and so forth, it's, it's really going to be uh, uh, an area in the center of town that's going to be a something that can be used by all of our residents on both sides of the canal and still be something that will attract hopefully newer people that come into town and, and, and want to be part of, you know, the town of Bourne. So. Yes, and also I think what, what has been stated here is the fact that we're not forgetting what that property once was and what it meant to the town. In fact, as part of our process in closing, is we're also going to be doing some historical plaques or... Uh, uh, signage mm -hmm. to let people know that this is what was here before, this is what's here now, so we can bridge the past to the future. Exactly. Yeah. Not many people know, but this was a, at one time a switching yard uh, for for trains and freight and so forth. And we did undertake in the very beginning of the project uh, a a series of tests uh, of the soils just to make sure there wasn't any contamination, which you know we've we've had to deal with in other areas of the parts of town, and there was none. So that's. That's been addressed and so forth, but I think it's important. You're right to to relay back to that portion of our history of of where we were and where we are today. So, well, thank you for thank you for uh, uh, agreeing to do this. Oh, I I it's been a real pleasure. I really am looking forward to the the project being finished. I I, I again I can't say enough about the excitement that this can bring to the downtown of Bourne Buzzards Bay and and the attraction that will create. I think. And I think it will be something that will be enjoyable for a lot of people for a long period of time. And uh, if, if I forget, um, in a few weeks, I want to say thank you for everything you've done in this community for <laughs> many years. I know you and I have had our moments, and hey, that's, that's, that's how it is. But it's, it's passionate. It's in, you're very dedicated. You're very detail-oriented. Whatever you do, you put your heart and soul into it. And um, you're going to be sorely missed, and I hope you don't go away totally. I hope we see you at town meetings, and I hope we can put you on some some of these subcommittees, and hope you can maybe stay around to see this finish if you can in your own way. Thank you, Peter. It's been a real privilege. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great night, and please come to town meeting on May 1st and support these articles.